All right. Notice we didn't lead with this segment. We probably should have because I think it's the biggest story in the league, but people are going to say I'm a homer or whatever. I accept it. Tatum and Brown, watching last night, that Toronto game, which was my favorite Celtics win of the year so far. Third game in four nights. Also third game in four nights for Toronto, to be fair. No Horford, no Brogdon. They played overtime against Miami on Friday night, which was really like a playoff game, especially for Miami. Miami needed it. Sunday, Brooklyn. Brooklyn kept coming at them. They put them away. And then they go to Toronto, and it just feels like a loss. This is one of those, oh, Horford's not playing. Brogdon's not playing. Toronto's annoying. This will, they'll keep it close. Toronto will put it away in the second half. So Toronto's up six at halftime. Celtics come out in third quarter and they play the hardest they've played all year. Tatum, Smart, Brown, Derek White. They're just like imposing their will on Toronto for like nine straight minutes. They end up, they, they end up winning the game. Toronto comes back a little. You knew they would. They end up winning the game. Blake Griffin plays. It was just so impressive. And it got me thinking like how special this Tatum Brown thing is. And how I actually think people aren't focused on it enough where these guys, now granted, the stats are a little skewed, right? There's more offense, I get it. They're averaging 57.5 points a game together. And when you put that in context of like Shaq and Kobe in 2001, right? That's like the gold standard of two guys scoring a lot of points who were fucking awesome. Shaq and Kobe were 57.2. They don't even have as much as Tatum and Brown this year. Bird and McHale at 87, 54.2. Duran and Curry, 53.3. LeBron and Wade in 2011, 52.2. Katie and Russ in 16, 51.7. LeBron and Kyrie, 51.6. So you have like this offensive bonanza of these guys. They've scored 30 plus in the same game 16 times already this season, which is the third most time in the history of the league. Tatum's clearly a first-team All-NBA. I think Jalen is, at least right now, a second-team All-NBA guy. These guys are the guys that we thought Paul George and Kawhi were going to be when they went to the Clippers. We are like, oh my God, those two guys, imagine having those two wings, two of the best players in the league. What's that going to be like? The fucking Celtics have it. They had it last year. They have a better version of it this year. And I, don't, I still don't feel like people think of them totally that way. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just too immersed in the season. But... Do you think people understand what's happening historically with these two guys? No, because uh, I didn't know it. <laughs> I didn't know that. And I watch them all. Like, for me, every time I watch them and going into this year, it's like whenever you put a ceiling on either one of these dudes, they come back the next year and they go through it. And that we always talk about, okay, how many guys can really be the number one guy on a championship winning team? Okay. Yeah. How many guys? Because that is like the rarefied air. There's nothing beyond that. And that list to me is never 10 people. Okay. It, it's closer to five most years than it would be to 10. It's usually four to seven. Yeah, right. I totally agree. And at first, it's like, man, Tatum's pretty good. Oh, wow. This guy could be an all-star. Okay, but is he really this? And then last year, there was this flirtation with like, is he a top five guy? And I'm like, is he? And then after like they bounce KD out, it's like, oh, he gets KD's belt. You could see from the jump that this year was going to be different because the one thing we didn't like about him in the finals was that he wasn't driving to contact well. Like he was getting derailed off of his path. We talked about it. You could see that he and Hanlon, like they fixed from it. the first game, I went, okay. He had a play against the Nets this weekend, Bill, where he drove left and finished through two people because and had to reverse it to get through two defenders to get rid of it. Then comes down, has Durant, isolation top of the key strips them yeah and you're just like is it like i don't say this it t it takes it like it has to be a couple years before i can say you know what the celtics have a player in jason tatum who can be the best player on a championship team and that is and maybe the best player in the league yeah right I think that's the, the journey for him and the thing that's changed is how hard these guys play game to game, half to half, quarter to quarter now, and how hard Tatum plays on defense, right? That's why when he wasn't good in the Miami game on Friday, right? He just didn't have it. It happens. It stood out so glaringly because he's been so awesome all season. It was like, wow. It was like watching like when Bird didn't have it in the mid 80s. Like, whoa, what happened to Tatum? Is he sick? Because you're just so used to like this certain level. There's a competitiveness with these guys that is really special and I think stems from the finals. 
and the Miami series too, but really the finals and the fact that they got their ass kicked. And I think these guys, they just really want it. They want it. They want to get to the top and you could feel it game to game. And like these 82 game regular seasons, it's not like the big games. It's not like the ABC Warriors showdown, Curry versus Tatum. Those aren't the games that tell you whether a team is potentially great. It's the games like that Toronto game where it's like, all right, you guys could punt on this game. You'd be fine. You'd be totally within your wherewithal. To it's third game, four nights, you're tired. Tatum's playing 37, 38 minutes a game. I get it. Tatum Golden State 39 probably, minutes. Golden State probably punts on that game. 100%. You know, they, they have the resumes. They're older. They're over it. Like Tatum and Brown are at that perfect age. And Tatum, or excuse me, get back to the Brown part of it. Yeah, we got to talk the Brown part too because it's so important to this. Clearly there's a gap. His shot making, I don't know if the handle's better. Like it it was pretty glaring against Miami and then it felt like when everybody was was really focusing in on like, I don't know if this guy can go more than two dribbles on any kind of drive, so make sure you attack him. And it felt like it was just getting worse and worse and worse. But the shot making from him and the intensity, the shots he was hitting again last night against Toronto, like, Get Tatum's a better player, but there when there are nights where Brown is the better player, it's not surprising. And once again, whenever I thought, okay, Brown probably at best can be this. At best, this is like four straight years with Brown where I'm going to stop pretending I ever know what the best version of him is going to be because he shattered expectations every season. Yeah, there's this narrative where now people are like, you know, people wanted to trade one of these guys. It's like, no, nah, did they? Like, the dumb people wanted to do it. I don't, I don't know if that was ever a real narrative. They're both two young guys that had a different Wait. point guard every year. Wait, now people were getting to the point where it was like, maybe you have to split these guys up Some because people, it's not working. Did you feel that way? I, I never felt like, I that just January wanted to see stretch, them with a veteran no, team. I'll, I never said it has to happen because I'm never, I feel like I'm never that guy. Like, hey, you have these yeah. two really good players and the league is built around wings right now and now you want to move on from them. But when it was January at its bleakest point of last season, when it still is one of the greatest turnarounds we've ever seen in season. It's smart team, taking, sh- taking shots. Yeah, well, the I get Knicks it. game and I'm yeah. like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And they weren't fun to watch again. And yeah. so then when they went on a little bit of a tear, the schedule is easy. The only time I'd ever said it was in that January phase. I'm like, we're doing this again. And so I was like, all right, you know, maybe have the conversation, but never. I just don't like when we kind of demand trades publicly in the media because it's like, all right, but what do you think you're getting? What What's coming back? Oh, this thing's coming back that I don't want as much. OK, I don't want to do this. It, it was right. never you're getting died. DeAndre Hunter and Bojan Bogdanovic. Yeah. But I do think Jaylen it was Brown? I think it was local. I think in Boston, man, it was kind of. I know, but that's, that's local Boston stuff, though. I know. I, I'm not saying it wasn't a conversation. I'm just saying it wasn't a conversation with anyone that I knew in a real way that was like a smart conversation because these guys were young. Tatum was 23 last year. To, to be like, oh, these guys can't play together because they had Kyrie and Kemba Walker and Marcus Smart. And like, I, I don't know. I just, we you and I always said, what would happen if Chris Paul was on this team? Would they figure it out? And then the answer, of course, was yes. And then the sub answer is, well, you could say that about any team Chris Paul's on. But we knew that there were pieces there that this should make sense as a combo. Now it makes sense. I felt like Smart, by the way, last year was a big part of the success story, not because of the defense, because I think he finally accepted like, yeah, I guess these guys are better than me. You're right. Jalen, 27 points, 7 and 4, 50% field goal. 30.9% 30.9% usage. And then Tatum is 31, 8, and 4. And he's 32%, 32.7% usage. He's getting on the line 8.3 times a game, which you know I love. I've always wanted him to be in the eights, averaging 9.4 threes, 48% shooting. What I love is that neither of them have like crazy high usage, right? They get their shots. They'll be between like 15 and 24 shots a game, but it's never like clear out. There's not a lot of clear out stuff. The ball seems to move. And then the other thing that's really helped them is their guards on this team are just excellent. And you go from like where they were a couple of years ago to I, Brogdon. I mean, Brogdon, when he's on the court, when he's healthy, like I was watching that Miami game Friday. I, I'm afraid to say this publicly, but I'm going to do it anyway. I was texting with my dad. And I was like, I think Brogdon should have played crunch time in that Miami game over Smart. As much as I love Smart, I just like when Brogdon when he's good, he presents this whole different level of problems for the other team because he can go by anybody and he's a d- 
dead eye three point shooter. Shoot fifty percent from three. It's just weird to be like, yeah, we don't need this guy in this crunch time game. But their guard. I, I don't think that's that weird. I, okay, I mean, it, it'd be weird to do it to Smart, but they Brogdon, wouldn't. The Smart's too important. But Brogdon should have been closing in that Miami game. And then Derek White's playing his ass off. They got Pritchard who barely plays. So there's always guards. There's always movement. They always know what to do off fast breaks. They're rebounding well enough. And then the Hauser thing has been the other piece that they can put Hauser with one of the two guys. The lineups with Hauser are fucking bonkers, right? The plus minus stuff. Because they just have this guy in the corner now who you have to guard, which opens up all this space. So, And um, nobody realizes that he actually holds up okay as a defender. So whenever a new team gets him, I know. it's so funny. And by the way, I mean, obviously it's because it's a white guy. But like it was yeah. happening to A.J. Green the other night. Or Aaron, you know, it was Aaron Green, excuse me, uh, from Milwaukee got in the game. And it was like, yeah. hey, new guy, we got a ginger in here. <laughs> Fresh and- fish. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Uh, your your favorite is when teams attack guys who are way better defenders than the teams realize because obviously they didn't scout the guy correctly. Hauser's definitely, Hauser's not, you know, Kevin McHale, but he's not terrible and he kind of knows where to go and what to do and he get his hands up like he's not a disaster. Yeah, sometimes that'll happen with the Celtics where it's like, wait, you switched into this? You wanted this over what you had? Like, I think teams get so incredibly screen happy yeah. that there'll be dumber teams that is like, all we've been doing is screen and then start the offense. It's like, no, you had the matchup you wanted. What, right. why, did you, why did you switch into something that's way worse for you? And I, I think it's kind of a habit thing. though. But Boston, by the way, the other crazy part of this is the defense is average and they're 20 and five and yeah. it's probably going to get better. And the half court offense, according to cleaning the glass is the number one half court offense. They were 10th in that last season. And you can see it, the the connectivity with these dudes, like the possession, there's just so many different ways they can attack you. And then when you try to switch, when you try to like, other than, you know, some of the lesser guys in the rotation, it, switching Getting the Celtics to switch isn't always like, oh, cool. Now, now I have this. Like switching. Now I have, Mal- to- now I have Malcolm Brogdon. Great. Right. Or, now I have to cool. go at him. I, I have Grant Williams on me. Like, yeah. wait, did I want this? And so, it's a scary team, man. And they're better. They're just better than they were last year. For yeah, bunch it's of not reasons. like it's not a flu cot start team. Their offensive rating is still one twenty. Their true shooting, which is stat I don't love, but anytime it's over sixty, you have to pay attention. It's sixty two point seven. Tatum's they're, over 60 this year. Yeah. They're almost 50, 40, 85 for splits. 49.4 field goal, 40.2, 3.84% 3. free throw. They have five guys in the top 17 for three-point percentage. Tatum's on off stats. He's 13.6. Um, Grandy had a couple good stats. Grandy said through 25 games, Boston has been down 10 plus points for 67 of the 1,215 minutes. And 55 of those minutes were the two Chicago games. Um, in their last 60 games, they're 48 and 12, according to Grandy, plus 12.1 scoring margin. They're 24 and seven on the road, which is another thing with this team. This team loves playing on the road as long as it's not Chicago with Mark Davis. And then I thought this was interesting. Tatum's, <laughs> Tatum's worst three games this year. He doesn't play against Washington. DMP, Jalen has 36. The Miami game Friday night, he's 5 for 18. He's terrible. Jalen has 37. The New Orleans game, he's bad in that game. He's 6 for 18. Jalen puts up a 27-10-7. These guys have a knack for if one guy kind of sucks, the other guy gets better. It's like they, I, they're they attuned with each other. And, uh, and I, I think they're all in on each other. Like I think those guys love each other. They're all in. And they want to win a title together. So I, I would say through the 25 game mark, this could not have gone better from where it was in June, where it's like, Jesus Christ, like what is this team? Did, was this too soon? Is that, did that finals, is it going to break Tatum? What, like, did they, did the Miami Golden State figure out some way to stop this? Like I, I was in dark places in July and now it's fine. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Does Ainge deserve more credit? Oh, I love this. This is a great coming up next. I'm going to tell you who deserves all the credit for the Celtics turnaround, and he's not with the team. That's, <laughs> and that's he might my... be in Salt Lake. Uh, I think Ainge does deserve a ton of credit. I mean, more for being patient with those two guys when everybody was trying to trade Jalen 
be member for Paul George that one year. We had that and smart. I think Ainge I w- wanted I, to trade him for Paul George, by the yeah, way, yeah, but Paul yeah, George right. wasn't going to stay. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was Paul George didn't want that trade. No, I think he drafted really well. And even like somebody like Pritchard, that guy's an NBA player, Rob Williams, Grant Williams. These guys are NBA players, did a good job. I that's what I you, never, that's what I never understood about it. Like when you're thinking about the most important things, like, okay, you're a parent. Yeah. Right. I am. Like if your kid gets a full ride to Harvard, but he also leaves the hose on, like those aren't the same things. It's not one good thing and one bad thing. So AC Earl doesn't equate to the Jalen Brown pick. <laughs> AC Earl. That AC Earl. Uh, who who like, is the what guy? The fuck? So my point would that, be this: like, yeah, Ro- Romeo Langford, huge whiff. I didn't get the pick either at the time. It's not going to be good. Ainge moved out of the number one pick when everyone was going to take faults mm. and grabbed another pick and and got Tatum. Okay, that's that's getting a full ride to Harvard. Taking Langford, maybe it's more than you know leaving the hose on, but I. I just never understood why it was like a one for one for every argument about Ainge. Where, yeah, all right, he had some misses. Maybe he had some more than you should have. Usually they were a little bit later. Also, the Kyrie but, trade was totally defensible and, in retrospect, a really good trade for a superstar for what they gave up. For what they gave up? Yeah, they gave up the eighth pick in the draft and a bunch of stuff. Zizic, seeing there too. By the way, when I said AC Earl, I meant Fab Mello. It would have been so much funnier if I had pulled off the, if I had landed the Fab Mello plane joke. Rest and so for some reason, I got AC Earl and Fab Mello. I got my terrible center draft picks confused. I kind of understand how you did it. But then I thought, was there a joke that I'm not understanding here? I just, I don't know how many other guys would have done that. And he did it for now somebody who is a top five player in the NBA. Like he did it for a top five player in the NBA. That, that to me is where like, I don't care if you fuck up 10 more picks in the 20s. Yeah. That's what I think the math is on that. <laughs> 